So hello, my name is Rob Kinneen. I'm the Outreach Director for Natives, North American Traditional Indigenous Food Systems. Today I'm at the Indigenous Food Lab in Minneapolis, Minnesota at the Midtown Global Market. So today we're gonna to go over knife safety. This is my knife roll. And someone at home probably doesn't really have one of these, but for all intents and purposes, this is a Santuco or a vegetable knife. Paring knife. And an eight inch chef's knife. And the most important part about a knife is that it's sharp, whether it be a $20 knife or a $300 knife. So I also have a steel with me as well. This is my paring knife. And what I'm gonna do is just show you really quick, like when I sharpen my knives, this is a 90 degree angle, 45. And then you wanna go like 15 to 20, depending on your, how you cheat the knife. And then bottom to the top. So I've been sharpening knives and working with knives for a long time. So like I'll take it and I'll just kind of go across. So I'm using my, I'm using my wrist, not my whole arm. But when you have a longer knife, you're gonna to wanna to draw it out a little bit more and make sure you kind of get across there. But you just want like that 20 degree, like 15 to 20 degree angle and you'll see what you need. Okay. So a couple of things when I'm cutting items, um, I pulled out just a few select items. Some are things that we work with quite a bit at the Indigenous Food Lab. You know, so I've got a butternut squash, a carrot, a turnip, potato, and then a, a leafy green. So this is hearty kale. And the big thing that I always kind of brought up was the most important thing is consistency on your cuts. So, so you have a small dice, a medium dice, and a large dice. If you're cutting a medium dice, make sure that you're cutting it consistently across the board so everything cooks the same. You know, one thing to think about, like with potatoes, for example, sometimes I'll cheat off a little bit. You know, so I'll kind of make sure I have one sound surface. That's why I have this piece here. So looking at about a half an inch across there. Now, depending on your uh, your skill level, you might not want to, you might just kind of want to do one piece at a time and that's fine. Or, you know, I've got three stacked up here. You want to make sure the starch or liquid in the potato doesn't move around too much, make it, you know, too mobile on you. And again, you're slicing into the potato and cutting. So you're not chopping so much So that's kind of what we're looking for. If you're doing a large dice, again, you know, I've got this item that's kind of rolling. So I'll kind of cut the top and the bottom off. Number one, to clean up the pieces. Number two, to give a nice flat working surface. Okay. So here we're going to go a little bit more of a large dice. All right, so we're gonna just put this right here. Carrots, parsnips, root tubers are kind of tricky because they're you know kind of thicker here and smaller here. So what I do is find a space that's kind of right about here. The other thing is like, you, you kind of, I found this out the hard way, but you wanna kind of put your hand into a claw and then you work off your knuckle. Because if you work off your fingertip, you just get a bigger accident. So if you're working off the fatter part of your blade and the knuckle, you know, you're coming across here and you're keeping your fingers safe. So again, I'll kind of just clip off each end here. I'm going to take it down to about here for a small dice. You know, I'm going to take this small piece and I'm just going to cut it into quarters pretty much. Now with this piece kind of holding it, I'm going to shave off. I'm going to cheat off one little edge here. And again, so I have a nice flat working surface. Now with this, I can kind of concentrate on just kind of getting slices done. Okay. 
most important part too is if you're not feeling comfortable, don't push it. If you're not gonna be comfortable slicing this, I would just leave it alone. That's gonna be a little thick for a small dice, but we're gonna leave that like that. If you can stack this up and, may, and do more than one cut, that's great. If you need to do each one individually, that's fine too. So again, that's a little bit much for me to handle. Well, maybe I could do that. Okay. And I'm just working off my knuckle there, guiding my fingers. Okay, so that's working for me, but if it doesn't work for you, you can just do a little bit at a time and get it done. Okay, so small dice. Medium dice, large dice. Okay. So one thing that's pretty tricky too is this is a uh, butternut squash. Now this one's kind of interesting because it is actually shaped more uh, cylindrical all the way across. Usually there's a bulb at the bottom and that can be a little tricky to navigate. So what I like to do is I'll take my knife and I'll just kind of square it up. And you're basically gonna have, again, like, so that's where the seeds are gonna be. So I'm gonna guesstimate right about here. Okay. Now, you have these two pieces of squash. So you're gonna have two different styles of um, cutting on this because this is gonna be solid flesh and this is gonna be a hole with the, where you get your seeds. So a lot of times at this point, um, I've worked with people where they will just take it and peel it down And that's fine, but I always kind of look at it. It's almost when you're cutting into like a melon or something, you're gonna have like a, a little yellow, uh, flesh that's discolored and then the actual meat. So I tend to actually just go a little deeper and just kind of make sure that I'm getting everything off and making sure it's a nice pretty yellow flesh. And you'll find that sweet spot where it's like enough pressure in, but you're not, um, you're not cutting into this, into the vegetable too much. Okay. And then sometimes it gets a little tricky on the end here. So I'm just going to cut. A lot of times this is a lot to navigate. So again, you can just cut this right in half. Okay. Now you're working with a little more of a secure space. I'm going to go just kind of medium dice here. Okay. Again, if you're feeling comfortable and you can double stack these pieces, great. If not, um, don't worry about it. Just safety first. Now, again, we've got this piece here with the seed. And again, a lot of times there's gonna be more of a rounded bulbous action. Um, not the case on this one. So we're just gonna clean it up. We're gonna cut that right in half. Aw, just a little guy. You know, this is going to be a different, different shape. So you can kind of use that and still cut it into a, a, a decent dice. But when you have stuff like this, you either work around it. So, you know, your, your cuts will be a little off, but I can go medium dice on this still and just work around the shape. Or we can take this, steam it, period, and use it as another part of the dish. So that's kind of cool how you can break all that down. We're gonna just tuck this away right here. So again, kale, um, a very hearty green. Um, there's a couple of things that I like to do with this. Now, 
A lot of people with charting kale will actually take it and destem it. So they'll take it and they'll kind of do this, which is fine. I paid for the whole thing. So whether that be me at home making a stew or me trying to feed a hundred people at an event, I'll take the whole thing. And because it's um, hearty, you're going to have a little bit of a cooking time on it. So, you know, you, you also don't want big pieces, generally speaking, like if you're making a salad or finishing this in a super stew and I'll kind of take it and I'll roll it up kind of like you would with a basil and it's called a chiffonade. So I just kind of take it again, knuckles in and just kind of work right off the top here. And I'll tell you the truth. You don't generally speaking stew kale for a long time, but um, I'll take this part. And again, a lot of people kind of, I, I think that's really nice. I think that has just like a little bit of texture. Um, so I'll just kind of go down the whole thing. You know, there's, now I'm just throwing away this instead of throwing away all that. But again, you want a nice consistent cut so that it's uh, cooking the same, has the same mouth feel. Um, you know, you don't want to have a salad with a bite of this. You want to have, especially with this, it's very fibrous. So you're going to want to get, you know, something that's a little more palatable when you're chewing it. Okay, so we've got a large dice, medium dice, small dice, total product utilization of a butternut squash. And this is called a chiffonade. You know, whether you're spending 15 or $300, a knife is a tool. I always think about that. I have a lot of friends that are in construction and they don't have $300 hammers. They just have good hammers. So um, you want to make sure your knife is sharp. You want to make sure your knife has got a consistent blade on it. Like when you, if you've been using a whetstone, sometimes they get a little wobbly and that's it. Okay. So this is Rob from Midtown Global Market and thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the little knife session.